Hey, how you doing? Justin here. Today we're going to talk about alternate picking the C major scale. Now I'm really hoping that you put the time into last lesson and that you've memorized the scale and that you can play it with all down picks. If you haven't, then this isn't the lesson for you. You really need to make sure that you can play the scale up and down all of the way through from memory using all down picks. Speed is not important. So just to revise, this is the scale. C major scale in the open position using all down picks. Then you play the top note once. We started on the note C. We went up as high as we could in that position, in the open position. Now we're going as low as we can, all the way down to the low E, back up. And we're going to finish on our C chord. So alternate picking now, we're going to start with a down pick and then straight away an up pick on the fourth string. Down, up, down on the third string and then an up. Down on the second string, up, down, up on the thinner string, down, up, straight back down again, so down, up on the open string, down on the second string, up, down on the open string, up on the third string, down for the open, up again now on the fourth string, down, up, then down on the root note, up, down, up on the thicker string, down, up on the open E, down, up, down on the A string, up, down. Now you want to start doing this really, really slowly. Okay, really slowly, like down, think about it, up, think about it, down. Don't, don't be afraid of starting that slow. Again, it's about building certainty so your mind knows exactly what it should be doing and then it's going to be a lot easier to speed it up. That I'll guarantee you'll get faster results doing it that way than you will if you go too fast and keep making mistakes. You want to go slow enough to get it perfect as you can because practice makes permanent, so practice perfectly. Okay, don't forget that. So, one of the things that you'll find really help will be saying the down and up out aloud. Okay, so actually going down, up, down, up, down, up. Because you'll find it harder to verbally go down, 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 down. If you're not saying anything out aloud, you might find that you do two downs in a row or two ups in a row. Before you ask, there are going to be times in the future that you might do two downs in a row or two ups in a row or a whole series of downs. The point of this exercise is to practice alternate picking and getting used to controlling the pick to do down and up motions. At various points when you're learning different things, you'll discover that there might be a system that's better in some circumstances than the other. For this exercise, I really want you to concentrate on very strict alternate picking. Saying it out loud helps. The other thing that can really help is realizing that there are markers. So you're always going to start with the down pick when you're moving on to the fifth string. It's going to be a down on that root note. The fourth string is always going to have that up on the open. On both the ascending and descending, so like going up the scale and down the scale, you're going to pick an up pick on the open fourth string. You'll pick a down pick on the third string and on the second string. And you'll pick an up pick on the thinner string. So you've got down, up, down, up, down on the third string, up, down on the second string, up, down, up on the thinner string, up again, down, down, up, down, and up again on the thickest string as well. So having those little key points where you can double check that you're doing the right picking, you're going to find very helpful as well. The key thing, it really is, and I'm going to go on about it so many times that you'll get sick of hearing it, it's about doing it slowly. It's about taking your time when you practice. Don't be afraid to do it really slowly if you need to. Don't be afraid of going down, up, down, up, down, up. Really, take it slow. 
slow is going to be better for learning this stuff i promise you something else that is important i think at this stage to mention is being aware of the thing that you are practicing so in this case you're practicing alternate picking for, for many of you it'll be the first time you've tried to do alternate picking of a scale so at this point i wouldn't be worried about say open string notes ringing out We've talked about that before, about muting the, you know, having the palm of the hand and the fingers laying a bit flatter to mute the strings. Yeah, that stuff's important. It's useful. But especially the first half a dozen times that you practice it, you just want to be focused on the pick direction and making a good movement there and ignore all of that other stuff. Because the thing that you're practicing is the alternate picking. That should be the focus of your attention. Once you're through that and you can, you're con getting consistently correct picking motions, and doing the down and up in exactly the right place, then at that point, you might want to start being aware again of the open strings ringing out and trying to let your, your fingers fall flat to mute the strings or letting the palm hit the, you know, do, doing that little motion there to mute the strings if you get one that's ringing out that shouldn't be. But don't focus on that at the beginning. At the beginning, you just want to focus on the, the directions of the picking and making sure that you get it right. I really would recommend that you do the starting on the lowest root note, going up as far as you can, down as far as you can, and back up to the root note, pausing on the root note just to help develop the sound of the scale in your ear. That's going to be super important. I wouldn't worry about practicing it with a metronome at this point. You can if you prefer playing with a metronome. That's okay too. There are advantages of playing with a metronome, but I haven't been. I've just been doing it freestyle, just trying to make sure that my time is reasonably solid. It doesn't want to be lumpy. You want to try and keep the rhythm consistent. You don't want to be going... That, that would be a bad idea, okay? So nice and slow, consistent rhythm with a metronome if you want, but you don't have to. Just give it, you know, the, the practice that we got a couple of minutes a day for a few weeks, you'll probably find that you make a lot more development than you'd anticipate. It's one of those things that starts off feeling really difficult for most people, but it gets easier faster than you'd think, which is a great thing, hey. So enjoy that practice, and I'll see you for some cool improvising shortly. <laughs>